Okay, in this video, what I'm going to do is right before your exam, your last thing, I'm just going to go over some, some calculator stuff for you just to make sure everyone's on the same page. The calculator can be your friend. If you're good at it, it will save you time. It's good to go. These things do a lot. Okay, cool. Let's go. All right, first thing you need to know is you need to turn your, the mode. You need to make sure you are in degrees. It, it, if it's reset, it, you know, oftentimes it will be reset by your teacher before you take it. Um, you need to put it in degrees. If it's in radians, all your trig problems will be wrong. Okay, so make sure your calculator is in degrees. Also, if you want to see your R and your R squared when you do a linear regression line, you go to second catalog, you arrow down. I'm actually not going to arrow down. I'm going to press alpha and I'm going to press D to diagnostics on. Um, and I'm going to turn the diagnostics on. That will give me my R values. Okay, now... If you ever get in trouble with your calculator, okay, like oftentimes, you know, a kid will be entering a list in here, you know, like say nine, whatever, six, okay, um, and, in, you know, instead of hitting clear, they'll press delete, and they'll delete the, the list by accident. Well, you can actually go in and insert an, another list if you want, but, you know, a lot of kids don't know how to do that, so, the, so what I recommend is, you know, if you get in trouble, don't fumble around with your calculator, okay, you know, just go second memory, which is the plus sign, and go down and just reset it. Okay, just go to reset and all RAM. Okay, and it will it will bring back your list and everything. Okay. Also, make sure you bring batteries. Okay, if you, you know that'd be a shame if you ran out of batteries right in the middle of the test. Okay, bring an extra set. Um, all right. Now, just you know, some some little random things like let's say you had a big number, and you know, and it and it asks, whoa, not with all those decimal points, um, and it asks you. Okay, that's horrible. What am I doing? Okay, so let, let's try this again. Okay, so let's say you had a number like this, and they ask you to put it in scientific notation, which is, you know, A times 10 to the K power, where A is greater than 1 and less than 10. Okay, I've done a video on that. I'm not going to do any teaching of concepts on this. It's just all calculator work. Okay, if you want to do scientific notation, you know, you just go to um, mode, and you can change it to scientific right there, you know, and then you'll quit. And then you just press enter again, and it will give you 9.6e to the 7. Now, you don't write it that way. You write it the way you would write this um, problem is you would put, you know, oops, you would put 9.6 times 10 to the 7th power. The e stands for the exponent. Okay, if you wrote it like this, 9.6 times, or, or, you know, e to the 7th power, that would be wrong, and you'd get it wrong. Okay, so no, no reason to get some silly points off there. Okay? Also, brackets. Be careful with brackets. A, a lot of kids make m mistakes on this. So, let, you know, let's say you had like, um, oh, I don't know, a geometric sum, you know, where you had like, say, 6 was the first term, you know, and it's like 0.5 raised to the ninth power minus 1 over, you know, 0.5 minus 1. Okay, a lot of kids um, will, you know, the calculator goes by order of operations. So, you know, if you were just to enter this in, like the top, then the bottom, it would you'd get the wrong answer. So what I always recommend doing is doing the top separately with big brackets. So you do 6, you know, and then, you know, point, what is it, point 0.5 raised to the ninth power, um, minus 1, you know, brackets. Then you always have to close the brackets with the big bracket. Ooh, whoops. I want big brackets. Second, big brackets. Okay, and then I'm going to just divide by, and then again, I'll use brackets again. Um, you know, you don't have to use big brackets for this because it's just, it's a small um, thing here. You know, there aren't brackets within the brackets, if that makes any sense. Okay, and wait, oh, whoops, looks, I'm still in scientific notation. So if that happens, I forgot to put my calculator back. That's actually a good error to make right now. Second, I'll put it back to normal, quit, boom. 11.97. Actually, that would be 12.0. Remember, three significant figures, people. Three significant figures, unless it says otherwise. Don't get an accuracy penalty. All right, stats. Stats comes from everything starts with the list. You know, you're going to enter in your list here. You know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Enter in your list. Whatever it is. You can do one variable stats. You know, you can go stat, calculate one variable stats. You know, list one. There's no frequency list. Okay, and that, you know, you, you get the mean is 5.6, the standard deviation is, you know, 1.96. And then, you know, if you need to draw a box and whisker plot, you have the min, Q1, medium, Q3, median, Q3, and the maximum, okay? Now, if I go back and I enter in another list, so let's go 
into the edit mode. You know, let's say let's, let's say this is a you know a weighted mean. So three came up six times, six came up five times, blah blah blah. Five came up once. You know, nine came up. I don't know four four times. How about that? And five came up three times. Okay, you got to make sure that these are balanced. Okay, we're going to go to stat. We're going to go calc one variable stats, and then in my frequency list here, I would do L2. So you do second, and then L2, not Z or Z. Second L2. Okay, boom, boom. Still can't get over Z. So it'd be 5.47. Standard deviation is 2.16. Blah 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 blah. You have all your numbers here. Okay. Um, now you can also do two variable stats. So stat. Let's use the same list. Two variable stats. Now this is going to give us um, the calculations for X and Y, L1 and L2. Now there's no frequency list when you do that, so um, you delete it. And you, well, usually there's no one. And again, they give us, um, you know, our X values, our standard deviation. But the beauty of two variable stats is they also do it for Y. So you don't have to do each one of them separately. You know, the mean of Y is that. The mean of, uh, and that that will become in, uh, that will come in handy on um, scatter plots when you have to, you know, find the median or the mean point. Okay. Um, now you can also do a line of linear regression. So we'll go to calculate um, linear regression. Okay. And list one, list two, boom, boom, boom. And there we go. So negative 0.125, that's our gradient. 4.5 is our y-intercept. So if you were to write the equation, it would be negative 0.125x plus 4.5. Okay, and then you have your r value and your r squared value. Okay, so it's a ne uh, slightly negative correlation. So there's really not a whole lot of correlation between the data, which makes sense because I just made it up. Okay. So that, that's very helpful um, right there. Um, now, another thing in stats is a chi-squared test. You always have to do this on paper, too. So you go to second uh, matrix, and you enter in your you know, chi-squared data here. Uh, let me put some chi-squared data. Okay, so uh, I just wrote down a quick list here. Boys, girls, I don't know, 0, 1, 2. I made uh, sports or something. The red or pink there is um, the totals. Now, the important thing is when you enter a matrix is you go row by column. So there's two rows here and three columns. Okay, Don't count the um, totals. Okay, so I would enter in 10. That's a little trick that they'll, you know, they'll put the totals there and, the, you know, a lot of kids will enter those in. 11, 2, 4. Okay, um, then you go to stat. You go all the way over to test because it's a chi-squared test. And you go up to C. A, and now it's going to give you your expected values in B in matrix B, which is nice. So you just calculate that. Boom. So our chi-squared chi value is 1.45. Degrees of freedom is 2. Notice how I'm going to three significant figures. Okay, notice that? Okay. 1.45 degrees of freedom are 2. Um, and then, you know, if we want to see our expected value, um, we could go back to matrix and look. It's made a nice one for at B for us. Woo, yeah. Okay, and we just put B and boom. There's our, uh, now, the only thing with this, with the TI is that sometimes these um, values will be really long and you're just going to have to arrow over to see them all. But, you know, that's not bad, okay? So you have all your expected values right there. Now, as far as graphing goes, you want to make sure that you, you know, you're very clear on what you're doing when you're graphing. Now, you always start with the Y equals. Okay, and I'm just going to do a, a quadratic here, like X squared minus 5X, um... 5x plus uh, uh, plus 2. I don't know. Who cares? Okay, and we'll just graph it. Okay, now it's nice to see the graph, but, you know, what they're going to ask you to do is analyze this graph, okay? And, and you know, oftentimes, you know, you might have to fill in a table, especially if it's exponential. So you could, you know, you type the, you always type the equation in here, okay, when it's solved for y, okay? And then, you, you know, you can go to table. You can see all the values there. So if you have to fill in a table, this is a great way to do it, okay? And then, you know, if you need to cal uh, calculate something, like what if we wanted to find the vertex? Well, that's the minimum, right? Unless it's turned over, in which case it would be the maximum. Um, boom, left bound, right bound to the right of the vertex. Boom, guess. Two, okay, basically that's 2.5, negative 4.25, okay? Um, not bad. All right, and you know you can also calculate values of x if you want to. You can, you know you go second calculate. Let's say I wanted to find the y-intercept. X would be zero. Boom, at y equals two. Okay. Um, what else can you calculate there? Um, you can calculate a maximum. 
a second calculate. What am I doing? Second calculate. Okay, you can calculate the zeros, but the zeros you're going to use poly simultaneous more often, which I'll show you in a second. Minimum, maximum. If two points intersect, it's really nice to, you know, to align and maybe a quadratic intersect, it's nice to, to do that. And you just, you get right near the intersection point, you press enter twice and boom, it gives it right to you. Okay, so graphing is really important. If, if, you're, if you're good with that, you, you should be good to go. Okay, now another thing is just to make sure, you know, you might have to play with your window a little bit. This is the standard window and you get this by going, it's zoom six, zoom standard. Okay, now if you want to change your window, oftentimes like a, you know, it might say that the, the domain, the X values is negative three, you know, to five or something like that, you know. Um, you can change it in here and look at it. Like a lot of calculus problems are like that. And they ask you to draw the graph, okay. So what I would do is just, you know, make the graph, shrink it up and then copy it, okay. Um, but other than that, you know, if you have that, if, again, if you can't see your graph, play around with it. You know, look for the y-intercept. If the y-intercept's 50, you're going to have to extend your y up pretty high, you know. But most of the time, you'll see it. Um, and then, you know, if you want to go back to normal, go to zoom 6, and it's, and it's back to normal, okay. Um, now, um, as far as apps go, you, have, are, you can use two apps. You can use Finance, which is built into your calculator. So let's look at Finance. It's the TVM solver. Now, the N is just the number of years or months or whatever. Interest rate. Present value is always negative. So, like, say you start out with $5,000 or whatever, euros, whatever. I'm American-centric, sorry. Uh, future value, you want to calculate that. The, you know, these are your compounding periods. I've done a whole video on this. The whole point is that use this. It, it's, it's a great way, especially for calculating N, because you don't have to use logarithms. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, what else? Um, now, the, another app here is Poly Simultaneous. And this one's great. Um, you poly root finder is where, you know, you say you had a quadratic and you wanted to find the zeros. You know, you just press next, next, and, you know, whatever the coefficients are, you enter in here and you can solve it. Um, you can also do simultaneous equation solver, which is when you have two simultaneous equations. Again, I've done videos on these, but I'm just showing you how to use them again. Solve. These are great. I mean, these save so much time. If you don't have this on your calculator, get it. Uh, it will help you so much, okay? And I'll show you how to transfer that in a second. One thing I forgot to mention on this, and I didn't write it down, and I will write it down right now, and in my best handwriting, the solver. The solver is an amazing little tricky thing here. You go to math, and you arrow up in the solver. Now, anything that's equal to zero. Now, quadratics I would solve, quite frankly, with... Um, Oh gosh, with with poly simultaneous. But like, let's say you had an exponential function. That's you know, like let's say you had two raised to the n power, you know, minus five or something like that, and you wanted to see if it ever hit zero. Oh, that's not going to hit zero. Oh well, yeah, well, um, then you just you know press enter, and then you go to alpha, and you solve, and it will give you your answer. So at 2.32, it you know uh, makes the value of x equal to zero. This is a great, great app, or not app, but like a tool to use. Okay, so anytime you have something equal to zero, um, especially with, um, you can use this with finance, you can use this with um, exponentials, it's great. And, you know, again, just type it in, and then when you get to X, you have to press alpha solve, you know, because it will have the answer from your previous problem there. So, so just make sure you solve for it, okay? Now, um, last but not least, let's get out of here and um, let's talk about transferring apps. So what if you don't have some of the stuff, okay? Well, finance is going to be there. What if you don't have poly simultaneous? Well, here's what you do. You go get, you find your friend, you get a cord, okay? You, you round one up from your teacher or something, or maybe you have one in the box that you got. And you go to um, second link and you go to send apps. And then you would you would highlight that and you just go over and press transmit. Now that's the person who has the calculator. The person who doesn't have the calculator, who wants the app, you go to second link, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Okay, second link and you go to receive and you just press receive and it's waiting. So you, you know, if you want to take it from your friend's calculator, you're waiting, they punch it up and it gives it, it you know, probably simultaneous two takes about three minutes or so to, now, Last but not least, 
Okay, it's still waiting. Still waiting. Oh wow, did I freeze up the calculator? Oh, okay. Well, because it's not connected, so it was an error, right? Um, it's not connected to another calculator. Now, what I would also do is I would check your, um, go to second memory and check which version of the TI you have. So if you have 2.55, that's the most recent version and that's what you want. Now, if you, you don't have that, um, I highly recommend that you get it. It's much easier to use. And you, what, the way you do that is you go to second link and someone can send it to you and send OS. So, that, you know, they would send their, their OS here. Okay. And there, again, I got an error because there's nothing. It's not, um, but that's how you do it. It takes about five minutes. Okay. Um, offhand, I cannot think of anything else. Um, but I, like I said, the, the, the calculator is your friend. You guys have been using it for a year and a half, two years now, close to it. Um, you know, you should be pretty, pretty good, but hopefully this helped you out a little bit if you see it. Okay. Um, anyway, great. Best of luck to you on your exams. I hope you guys do great. Um, take care.